We've harvested a small child. That's almost certainly going to go on the news, isn't it? Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest Clarkson Farm Season 2 moments. I've got binocular rivalry. I can see two things at once, like an Apache gunship pilot. Like a goldfish. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at all the best moments from the continuing saga of Diddley Squat Farm. Let us know in the comments whether you'd ever start a farm. Number 10. Saving Pepper We already saw Jeremy get attached to a struggling lamb in Series 1, though that ended very sadly. But then, he got attached to one of his new cows, Pepper, the white one, after the daughter of the farmers he bought her from made him promise to look after her. What did you say to me about Pepper? You said I got to look after Pepper, didn't you? Exactly, and Pepper is having a great time. By the end of the series, however, Pepper hasn't been able to get pregnant, either artificially or with a bull the farm hires. So far, the bull had managed a bit of drinks party chat. But that was it. This means they only have one option to make any money from Pepper. Send her to slaughter and sell the meat. It's touch and go for a moment, but eventually Jeremy decides Pepper is more important than turning a profit. Lisa, we've got a pet cow. Number nine, chili tasting. Jeremy decides that this year on the farm, he wants to start growing chilies. Chilies are relatively easy crops and extremely useful in cooking. But first, he needs to decide exactly which varieties he wants to plant. How does he do that? By taste testing them, of course. Naga. Naga. You know, you've got to chew it ten times before you swallow it, otherwise it burns your stomach. He struggles to get the chilies down and then turns to some professionals to cook them. But the fumes from the chilies are so powerful. <coughs> <coughs> I'm ten feet away from them. Oh my giddy aunt. That everybody in the kitchen can't stop coughing. They're trying to talk to each other, but the smell is just too potent. <laughs> <laughs> now he's how, how many poles do you get through in a year? <laughs> he's, <laughs> it's <bigger than> he's <laughs> very good. <coughs> Number eight, bird flu. So how do we stop this lot getting? We will have to shut the birds in. What, really? Generally, bird flu is no laughing matter. And during filming of season two, the entire UK was gripped by one of the worst outbreaks in history. But you can find humour anywhere, and when Jeremy's told he needs to bring his flock of chickens indoors to stop the disease from spreading, they come up with some creative solutions to enrich the chickens' lives. There's ways that you can make their lives more enjoyable inside. This includes playing them music and audiobooks over the speakers, including, at one point, some racy erotic literature. No, you're being silly. No, uh, at home, Cackleberry Farm, every shed has a radio. Have you got any audio books that we could play them? They yeah, love it. If anything's going to keep you entertained while you're isolating for months, it's that. And we're sure that Diddley Squat chickens were far from bored. Number seven, tricking the council. Much of series two is preoccupied with Jeremy's quest to build a restaurant on Diddley Squat. A step up from the notorious farm shop, the restaurant would be a cooperative between Diddley Squat and many other local farms who are being run out of business. Hold on, oh, whoa, that barn over yeah, there. the barn in the middle of the field. We don't need planning permission. No. But the council blocks Jeremy at every turn until he gets the idea to convert an existing derelict barn which wouldn't need planning permission. We will then need to go hell for leather to get the restaurant built, fitted and serving food within two days. To pull it off, they need to send an email to the council and then get everything built before the council can object, which they estimate will take about two days. It's an exhaustive operation, but they pull it off, and the restaurant is running with farm-to-table produce just in time. I kept pinching myself that we'd actually done it. That we'd opened a restaurant in the face of such a relentless barrage of opposition. Number six, beer tasting. Right, is this it? Yes. Mmm. It's a nice beer. Jeremy's been growing barley on Diddley Squat and wants a local brewer to turn that barley into a unique Cotswolds-themed beer. 
This, of course, entails a large amount of beer tasting, just to make sure the flavour is exactly right. We've chosen some quite interesting hops. Mmm. And one has melon-type characteristics. He downs pint after pint of fresh beer while completely ignoring the brewer explaining to him what he's done. At the end of it all, Clarkson is too drunk to drive back to the farm, meaning the show's assistant director has to step in. It's quite good fun developing your own beer. Yeah. The little bit of... He says he can tweak it, that's what brewers do. The drinking doesn't stop when Jeremy is back, however, as he then invites Caleb and Gerald round, and they blast through a whole case of beer samples. Number 5. Carving. Focusing on the job in hand, I headed to the cow department, where I was amazed to find exactly what I was looking for. The cows are ready to give birth, and because they're supposed to be making a TV show, Jeremy wants to get a birth on film. Unfortunately, the heifers keep carving without warning, meaning that if they do want to film it, they've got to find a solution. Oh, heavens. No, no, I don't believe I'm seeing this. This turns out to be a device Jeremy buys from a shop that gets attached to the cow's tail and then sends a text message when it's going to carve. It's amazing what you can do with technology these days. So what you do is you pop it on the animal's tail and then when it's about to give birth, you get a text message from this little machine. And the techie solutions to carving didn't stop there, as the vet later had to lend a helping hand which involved extracting a calf using a wrench, which YouTube won't let us show you. Number four, free clothes. Oh, that's local, that's fine. This is all local. This is all local. This is all local. The farm shop's been having trouble since the beginning, with Lisa stocking things that aren't from the farm or from a 16-mile radius. It was pineapples back in season one. Now it's coffee beans. And far more egregiously, farm-branded clothes produced far overseas. They get numerous warnings from the council over this and then decide to take advantage of some loopholes to shift the stock. We don't sell t-shirts. We're giving them away for free. Oh. But if you'd like to buy a Brussels sprout for £20, I can give you a free t-shirt. Lisa tells customers she can't sell them a t-shirt, but she can sell them an outrageously expensive vegetable that, believe it or not, comes with a t-shirt or a hat for free. Yeah, what type of potato would you like? I've got the potato with the flame. Number three. Shrew. Oh my god! What? It's a little shrew or something. Oh, there he is. Oh, wow! They've got to get the tractor out ASAP, but unfortunately, a rogue shrew has gotten into the machinery. You're not frightened of mice. I don't like rats and mice. It's no. not a rat. It's Can a you rat. finish him off, please? I'm not going to finish him off. They eventually get it out by sliding a hose down the tube it's hiding in, only for it to run straight underneath the wheel of Clarkson's infamous monster tractor. There he goes! Meow. Mr. Mouse. He's underneath your wheel. He's got to move the tractor out of the way without accidentally reversing a little, which is easier said than done. In the end, the wheel rolls backwards, and he and Caleb fear the worst, only for the shrew to miraculously survive and go running off to safety. He lives! <laughs> <laughs> Number two, crisps. So, here are our potatoes. Rinse them or wash them? Just, just rinse them. In the first series, the potatoes caused a lot of trouble. Jeremy had far too many of them and he wasn't able to shift them in time, even resorting to giving them away. In series two, he was determined to not have that problem and decided that crisps were the solution. He brought in a makeshift chip kitchen in a storage container and got to work slicing potatoes with disastrous results. Look. Yeah. So you go down like this, but your fingers are there. If you get them too low, look. Oh, can you imagine how easily you could take a finger? Ah! While trying to demonstrate how to use a slicer without cutting your fingers off, he only went and did just that. Since no one would want to eat thumb-flavoured crisps, I was bandaged up and nagged out of the door by Lisa. We won't show you the injury, but it was nasty. Pulling a chunk out of his thumb and leading to emergency plastic surgery to fix the wound that evening. Number one, loose cows. Now it's through the fence. Okay, oh. out. Series one was all about sheep, but after they proved to be far too much work that resulted in a net loss, Jeremy ditched the sheep in favour of a small herd of cows. Mm. No, 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 stop it. Stop it. But cows aren't easy either. 
and more than once they proved themselves to be capable escape artists. It took a while for Jeremy to get the security of the field just right to stop them knocking down the fences and escaping, and they're eventually moved into another barn for the winter. Down you go. Down you go. No, no, no. Oh. But one cow just doesn't want to go inside and needs to be tired out so it will go in. Who knew cows were so good at climbing? Oh my god, one of them's a mountaineer, it's Chris Bonington the cow. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.